It was just a normal day waking up for Eclipse. As he walked outside, breathing in the fresh, cool morning air, glancing around his tribe in the treetops, his mother called him from the kitchen. Eclipse, dinner's ready, she hollered. Coming, Mom, Eclipse replied. He took on one more second of the glorious morning before receding back inside the house to contain breakfast. Fresh breakfast consisted of papayas and watermelons. Eclipse's favorite. His mother, Moon Chaser, was smiling and sitting at the counter. Eclipse smiled back at her. He grabbed a papaya from off the floor, well, counter, in dragon terms, and began gnawing at it with his sharp teeth. Mother ate a watermelon while looking through a scroll. The scroll was titled Nightwing History. He had read that one a few times. Clips was always a natural born reader. That was one of his favorite things to do. Read. He could let the world slip away and only be encased into the mind of the author. The peace and calm solemnity of the words sprawled across the page. Calmed him. Cliffs felt a wave of fear wash over him as his father stomped into the house. Moonwatcher sat, sat up, back st straight, as if startled. His father, Crater, stared at Eclipse with disgust. Eclipse lowered his head, ashamed. Crater snatched up almost all of the food and stomped out again. Moonwatcher was tense. Eclipse could see it in her eyes. What's wrong, Mom? Eclipse said to the mother. Nothing, honey, Moonwatcher replied. Eclipse knew she was lying. Eclipse knew something was wrong, but he didn't want to pry, so he just ate his papaya in silence. After lunch, well, breakfast, Eclipse went down to the local gardens walking over to his favorite batch of daisies. He, s and took, he took in the smell of the fresh flowers, the other dragons around him slipping out of his conscience. It was like whenever he was there, he was in a dream world, a dream world full of all, all peace and calmness, with no care in the world. He snapped out of it when he heard a, a person behind him yell. He turned around to see the tribe leader. Bone Rattle. Bone Rattle and his tribe approached him with a stern look on their faces. Eclipse was terrified. Bone Rattle was a five-year-old when he was taken over. The, he took over the tribe. But now. He's a strong, lumbering, 27-year-old. He was very well built, and Eclipse was only nine at the time. He wasn't... He wasn't prepared to be able to fight these people, if need be. But his mother was behind them, so Eclipse felt a little bit more safe. Why hath you be here? Bone Rattle said, obviously trying to make it sound scary. Eclipse said, But I, I, I was just looking at the flowers, he stuttered out. Well, you are not supposed to be here anymore. You are cursed and you mustn't, you mustn't stay here so, as to have spread the curse to us. Bone Rattle boomed. Eclipse 
whose eyes widened. He, he never thought he had any sort of curse. But being the naive little nine-year-old dragonette he was, he bowed his head and followed them silently out of the tribe. As he walked down the paths, all of his friends looked away at him, looked away from him. He felt ashamed. He, at that moment, he felt like he could just, he wanted to just dissolve right there and there into the floor. Moonwatcher was bowing her head silently, following the tribe. Once they reached the outskirts of the forest, which their village resided in, he was kicked out forcefully by one of the guards, named Fungi. Eclipse stumbled forward, gaining a tiny scratch on his wing, which started bleeding. Fungi, what did you do? Why, why did you do that? Eclipse asked to the guard. Because I don't want to have anything associated with you now. Fungi replied in a harsh tone. Eclipse began to tear up. His mother, Moonwatcher, was also kicked out. They traversed the grassy plains with their bodies slumped as they receded from the village. Nobody liked them now. Just because Eclipse had some sort of curse. Or at least that's what the tribe believed. They didn't even give them any explanation what happened. <sighs> Eventually, after what seemed like hours of walking, they reached a small cavern in the side of the Claws of Cloud Mountains. Claws of Cloud Mountains were mostly deserted at this time, since there was only a bunch of cave systems and rock and stone. There was no tribes that really went here. Eclipse and Moonwatcher entered the cave with... They were scared. Scared that they might find some sort of angry dragon inside. Moonwatcher was never a really large dragon. She wasn't very good at fighting either. But neither was Eclipse, so they just stuck together, back to back as they entered the cave. Eclipse breathed out a small plume of fire to lit up the entire cavern. It was about 20 feet wide and 10 feet tall. It was enough for them. A few days later, they had an entire home set up. It consisted mostly of leaves for beds, fallen over logs for tables, and some moss blankets. Eclipse always dreaded sleeping on the hard stone floor every night. The coldness seemed to shiver, emanate through his bones. He and his mother hadn't gotten much sleep in, in the last few nights. They were constantly hearing sounds of night animals. Whether it be wolves, wolves, wing beats, battles, and, occa and an occasional rain wing that wandered out of the forest. Green wings were always pacifists, or that's at least what Eclipse was told. Today was hunting day. They had to go out and find some form of food to eat. Hunting was one of the few things Eclipse was good at. Despite him lacking talents in almost every other aspect, he was very good in hunting and was the leader of the little kids hunting group back in the tribe. Eclipse missed his father every day. His father may have been rude and cold to him and hit his mother a lot, but he still loved him. He wasn't sure if Crater loved him back though. 
Cliff sat on his bed, staring up at the cold stone ceiling. His mother shook him awake. What is it, Mom? Eclipse said. It's hunting day, remember? Moon Watcher soothed. Moon Watcher's voice soothed him, as if it was a, a cold, a fuzzy, warm blanket of emotion. He, he rolled out of his bed, his body slumping on the floor, his wings making this giant thump sound. Moon Watcher. Moon Chaser jumped back. Her heavy breaths, her heavy breathing, he felt it on his neck. She gave, he gave her a um, hug and they went out to hunt. Eclipse was not a very fast flyer, but, her, but him, his mother, where he much was. She zoomed across the empty rolling plains with such speed, agility, and gracefulness that he was almost mesmerized. Eventually, he spotted a young calf grazing out in the plains. He slowly and cautiously lowered it himself down to it, dropping on a little hill far, far, above, far, far above it. He ga he locked his gaze on the little cow, munching on grass peacefully. And with such swiftness, he lunged at it, his claws digging into the calf's neck. And with one sharp swish of his claws, he had killed the the cow with a large gash in his back. Moon Chaser dropped down to him. Nice catch, she said. Thanks, Mom. Eclipse replied. They carried the calf back and ate it. Usually they were used to cooked prey, but this was an exception now. They were surviving with the bare minimum. Eclipse had began to like this environment, the sound of the birds chirping, the waves rustling in the lake next to him, the leaves, the leaves swaying the wind. He found it calming. He didn't get this opportunity much. He glanced over at a roly-poly on the floor. He smiled at the tiny creature, so small and helpless, yet so valiant. Just then, he heard a chattering noise outside. It was indiscernible. Indiscernible. Indiscernible and quiet quite loud. He had never heard anything like this before in his life. He started growling at the noise and Moon Chaser asked him to go find out what it was. He dropped his wings and tucked them to his sides as he, and as he peered out of the opening. It was scavengers. Tiny scavengers. One of them had a small tuft of hair on his head, and the other one had a longer tuft of hair. They were odd little creatures. Scavengers. Little paws and pokey, stabby sticks. Cubs approached them and said, Hey, what are you two doing out here? It's not, it's not safe for small creatures like you. The two scavengers' eyes widened and looked up at him. They frantically wobbled around and started screaming. Eclipse grabbed them both, one with his talon and one with his tail. 
They looked at him and were obviously shaking, cowering in fear under his large size. Eclipse tried to poke them with his talons, but they batted his talons away. How rude, Eclipse said, but then again I'm being rude. He looked down at the tiny little scavengers in his claws. He wondered how such a small species could survive out here. And he also wondered how such a small thing could have killed Queen Oasis. We will wobble, one of the scavengers said to him. What? Eclipse obviously didn't understand these creatures' languages. We will wobble you. He sighed at the creature. He placed them down upon a high, high tree as they both clung to the trunk, desperately trying not to fall. He very much didn't like this. The sounds of the little creature yipping just echoed through his brain, rattled his skull. He sighed again. He's been sighing. He had been sighing a lot recently. He went back into the cave and just uh, told his mother, "They're just scavengers." Moon Chaser glanced at him, nodded her head slightly, and then kept eating her half of the cow. After they had finished eating, Eclipse crawled back onto his bed in, in a ball. He had been so tired that he forgot to do the one thing that he'd wanted to do. Bathe. He hadn't washed in so long. I bet he smelled awful. As he slowly drifted into sleep, his eyes feeling heavier and heavier by the seconds, he finally let them close and drifted into a soft layer of sleep. Eclipse woke up about an hour later to a loud clamoring and his mother arguing with someone. He couldn't recognize the voice at first until he finally recognized it. It was Bone Rattle. Bone Rattle was arguing with his mother about something that he couldn't quite understand. Something about a forest. Something about a forest named the, the Ring Snack Forest. Moon Watcher, Moon Chaser. Obviously felt scared at them. At, at the name. He'd never seen his mother so scared before. He slumped out of bed. What's going on? He mumbled. Bone Rattle glared at him sharply. Obviously a signal to shut up. His jaw snapped shut. He just stared between the two arguers, glancing at it each one has their words were emanated from them. Until finally, Bone Rattle said, That's enough! We're taking him! Whether you like it or not, that kid has a curse. We can't afford to have him live here. We can't afford to have him on this earth. We can't afford him to have him in Peria. He's too much of a danger to the other dragons around him. Bone Rattle grabbed him by his arm. Forcefully, he felt a twinge of pain at the sudden contact. He yelped in surprise and Bone Rattle dragged him away, his mother crying and trying to pull him away from him. It was like a game of tug of war, a tug of war between an angry dragon and his own mother. A moon chaser obviously couldn't keep him. And contained for too long, and Bone Rattle dragged him away. Eventually, he, they reached a dark, ominous forest. It was like a fog um, was emitted from it. A dark fog. He could see willow trees, mangroves. Where? but very hard to control trees. He'd always loved nature, but something about this forest just seemed off. 
the darkness inside. He peered in and asked Bone Rattle, What does this have to do with anything? Bone Rattle replied, You're going in there and not coming back out, peasant. Echoes felt stung, those words stinging his heart. He sniffled and, and took a step to, to enter the forest, but then, then took it back and re- ran back to his mother. I don't want to go, he cried, burying his face into his mother's breast. It's all right, Chaser said. You'll be fine. You just have to stay strong. Maybe you'll get out of this alive. Clips was pushed into the into the forest by the guards. Though the entrance was closed by a large log, but he was too small to push away. He was he was absolutely devastated. He was separated from his mother, his father, and all other dragons. He had no choice but to go on. There was a small overgrown path carved out into the, into the forest. He began walking around it, feeling a sense of uneasiness as he did. There was, it was mostly a clear path, except for the few grabber ivies trying to grab onto his ankles every once in a while, and his calons getting entangled in vines, until he found it. A dragon snap. A giant, full round dragon snap. He knew what it was by looking at it. He'd seen it before in books, but he never thought it would be this large before. He cautiously st- stepped over, his talons clanking on the floor. He tried to go around it, but what happened? What was he was dreading the most happened. The dragon snaps, her tendrils unfurled and reached towards him. The sticky substance all over them attached to his skin. He writhed around vigorously to keep it from pulling him in, but he was too weak. The ten, the little vine-like tendrils pulled him back into his stomach and closed him in. All I could feel was the sticky substance all around him. And all I could see was the yellow inside of the dragon snap. He started yelling out for help, but he knew nobody could hear him. He kicked vigorously at the top of the dragon-eating plant as it slowly began to digest him. The acid inside the substance dissolving his skin. He kept it. He reached his talons up into the sky to the sky, the ceiling of the plant, and began to rip it open. After a couple minutes of struggling, he finally got it open. The plant, after all the struggle, just curled away from him, obviously tired out from the experience. He kept going along, finding more dragon snaps and more dragon-eating creatures, even encountering a few timber wolves. The, wolf, the largest kind of wolf ever. Almost as large as him. A pack of them enclosed on him, so he had to fly up into the trees to be able to get away. He was exhausted from all the running and flying, all, all of the having to get vines out from his talons. So he, and he kept going, though, until he found the small cave. The cave was about five feet tall, so he had to duck. <clears throat> he kept moving along the seemingly endless path until he found a, a larger opening. This opening was about twelve feet tall, so he was able to stand up comfortably. It was filled with broken scavenger items scattered all across the cave floor. He curled up into a corner and rested for a few minutes until he heard something. Clump, clump, clump. What's that? He said to himself. Clump, clump, clump. The noise came again. It was coming from an 
extra passageway. It was rather large passageway. Look like it could fit five dragons comfortably side by side. It was starting to get nervous as the noise started getting closer and closer. Clump, 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 clump. He was dreading to see what it was. It was but clinging onto this the small stinge of hope that there was another dragon that could help him get out of here. Finally, the thing came, but it wasn't a dragon. It was something, something much worse. It was a giant spider-like thing. It had eight legs like a spider, and it, was, it had green stripes all over it. Its fangs drooled out some lime green liquid. It stared down at him. It was at least twice his size. He screamed in fear, yelping, backing himself into a corner of the cave. The thing approached him and tr attempted to stab him in the forehead. He dodged just in time and, and, scratched, and breathed a, a plume of f flame on, on its underbelly. The thing made us an indiscernible screeching noise in pain and turned around, flinging him into the wall with one of its furry arms. He groaned in pain, now covered in blood from the impact. He scratched at the creature, the claws and arms and venom and fire being flung everywhere, till eventually, till he was covered in stab wounds, stab wounds and venom. The spider finally gave up and retreated back into the cat passageway. Breaking the ceiling and blocking the passageway as it did, so he couldn't follow him. He curled up near the corner in tremendous pain. He rubbed his wounds. He felt worse than he had ever did before. Not just because of the physical pain, because of the emotional pain that he wasn't here with his mother to comfort her, him. Eventually, he was able to somehow fall asleep. The venom was slowly spreading across his skin, but he didn't care. He was too tired to even care. He closed his eyes and let sleep wash over him. The next morning, when the light was slightly visible, because the sky outside was a little bit more but the, the treetops mostly cut in the fog, mostly covered it. He, grew, he grumbled and he looked down at his talents. They seemed, he seemed bigger. Something was off about him. Instead of his talons being white, they were red. I think it was just the blood stains of his own blood. He went down and he rubbed his horns aggressively. His head felt weird. He felt too tall, too wide. He didn't, he didn't think much of it at first. But as he clambered over to a seemingly intact scavenger mirror, he looked at him as it had his reflection. He was horrified. His teeth were now exposed. They were red and, and serrated. His eyes had turned an ominous red color. And we're glowing purple. All the moon tribe markings of his had turned red. He had large scars across his snout and under eyes. Half of his body was a red base and the other half was a black base with interlacing colors. He looked terrified. He was also much, much larger than he should have been. He looked like he was easily the size of a 17 year old, not a 9 year old. He, he saw himself in the mirror and cried. He just kept crying. But he found that his tears were the same venom. The same green venom. They dissolved the floor and impact 
he just caused him to cry more. He tried to exit the cave. His large body was making it a lot harder now. He expected more timber wolves to try and attack him and more dragon snaps to curl into him. But to surprise, all the woodland creatures, all the woodland creatures avoided him. All the dragon snaps just curled away from him. He was, he was terrified. He didn't know what was going on. He eventually exited the cave. As he went back to it, he returned back to the cave where him and his mother resided mostly. As he silently entered the room, as he found his mother crying, his head, her head turned away from him, sitting on her bed solemnly. The floor below her was wet with tears. Moon Chaser was sobbing uncontrollably. He looked with pity at his mother and said, Mom? But he found that his voice was a lot deeper, a lot more ominous. The awning of the, the awning, op the yawning opening of the cave seemed a lot smaller to him now. The moon watcher turned her head and looked at him. She looked utterly shocked at his new form, but despite all of the, everything, she still ran and hugged him. Just, 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 through sobs, he blurted out, You're alive. Yes, yes I am, he replied. Him and his mother, after a few minutes of talking over what the events of the forest, returned back to the tribe where Bone Rattle was awaiting him. Bone Rattle looked extremely surprised at his survival and immediately bowed down as if he was some sort of king. They accepted him back into the tribe. Everyone now looked at him in terror instead of disdain. When he, when he returned to Crater, Crater didn't want to have anything to do with him. Not, he didn't want to have to do anything to do with his own son. The corpse felt devastated. He was devastated himself. He was devastated at his mother. And he was devastated at the bone rattle. And especially his father. He couldn't, all of his friends, all of his friends, <laughs> were nervous around him now, and he could tell, even though they tried to cover it. He wished he could, he wished he could 